This is EE2900, week 9, lecture 1. And this is going to be the last week of lectures for EE2900 because last week, what we did was, or the last couple of weeks, we really worked on the Ripple Carry Adder design. We looked at examples from the book. Uh, so right now, it's up to you to practice enough VHDL and combination logic problems so you're well versed in combination logic design principles, VHDL, model sim simulation for 2902. So this week, what we'll do is the first lecture, we will cover uh, basically the project for this course, which is square root computation. Next couple of lectures, we'll wrap up the course by looking at the tree-based uh, multiplexer design, that is how do you specify a four to one mux in terms of three two to one muxes. And in the final lecture, we'll look at signal tap uh, but anyway, so the project is square root computation and the concept that is at the block diagram level, I've filled out some of the blocks. And basically, since this course is on combination logic, you will learn how to use the idea of abstraction via the Cordis Mega Wizard to implement these modules. So let me write the, let me highlight the concepts in red. Abstraction are the main parts of this project, okay? So... The first thing you got to do is you'll have a three-bit input using the switches to uh, you'll compute the square root of the three-bit input. So what you need is a module that actually converts integer to floating point, and then you will do the square root of the floating point number. Notice that the input is three bits of this module, and the output is 32 bits. So you're going to be using 32-bit floating point. That's what I recommend. You're welcome to use 64-bit floating point. But then after that, you're going to convert since you're not dealing with floating point numbers in this course, we're going to be converting floating point to fixed point, okay? And we're going to be displaying fixed point. So in essence, that's the this block here that is the display module, which basically displays your square root So here, let me put this in red. So going through here, this display module, if you will, is the main idea behind the project. And this is interfaced to your seven segment displays. So here is X zero, let's say this is seven bits down to X three. And this is also seven bits. And basically, since this course is on combinational logic, there will be a clock underscore 50, a 50 megahertz clock that these modules will utilize. But all you need to do is connect the clock signal from your board into these modules. And I'll show you how to use the mega wizard in this lecture. Okay. That's the second point in this lecture. But the first point is the idea of fixed point. As the term implies, you decide a priori how many bits you have for the integer part and how many bits you have for the decimal for part. For example, let's take 8-bit fixed point. I'm not saying you 8-bit fixed point will work uh, for this project. Here, I've used the 2-bit fixed point. You can even use 64-bit fixed point. I don't. I would not recommend using 8-bit fixed point for this project. Okay. So let's say you assume that the decimal point is between these four bits and these four bits. That means you're implicitly saying the weight of this bit is two to the zero, this is two to the one, this is two squared, this is two cubed. Therefore, the weight of this is two to the negative one, two to the negative two, two to the negative three, two to the negative four. Therefore, this number in 8-bit fixed point is going to be 0.25 decimal. So the first idea behind the project is, therefore, you first have to understand and use the appropriate fixed point encoding.
that's point number one point number two is how do you use this quartus mega wizard and to do that let's do a simple project so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you just the main ideas behind the mega wizard so first let's create a new project but for that I'm gonna first create a new directory so let me go to my C drive again and I believe I had the ripple carry adder here so let's just delete this I don't need this anymore let me create a new folder and so here what I'm gonna use is simple um, let's see I don't know uh, mega wizard example okay so in this directory so now what I'm gonna do is go back in here create a new project new project wizard and all of these steps you should know by heart by now Mega Wizard example. Let's select the folder, and then what I'm going to do is just name of the project again should be the name as same as the folder name. Remember, no spaces in your path names. Mega Wizard example. Then let's go to next. Let's choose the FPGA. We're not adding files right now. Cyclone two. Then it's going to be. EP2C20 F484C7 Next, next, finish So now as usual I'll import my assignments Stop. So let's now create the top level file. Now, when the first change is, I'm going to import my clock, and you can. Well, before that, let me declare all my libraries. So entity, let's save this in the right directory, of course. Mm, oops, I know I put on my C drive. Entity mega wizard example is port end mega wizard example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my clock. It's called clock underscore 50. You can get this from your user's manual. It's of type standard logic. My um, uh, Let's import my switches. These are standard logic uh, vectors, 10 of them. Okay, and then my hex displays. Okay, and then the simple top level Okay, so let's do this. Let's, um, since we should have time, let's instantiate a mega wizard module and then simulate it in uh, model sim. So let's do now to use the mega wizard. We're gonna go to tools, mega wizard plugin manager. Okay. And then you, let's say you create a new mega custom mega function variation. Now this is the Mega Wizard Plugin Manager start page, if you will. Here are all the installed plugins, and we are going to be focused for this project on the arithmetic. So what we want are actually two modules. One is the Altera FP. FP stands for floating point, and you also have other modules like LPM, Library of Parameterized Modules, Add, Subtract. Oh, what's this? Let's see. So that's an integer square root mega function. This is very interesting. I didn't notice this till now, so maybe you want to look at this as well. But anyway, I'm going to, just for illustration purposes, we're going to use 
the Altera fixed floating point convert module to implement, uh, you close the uh, journal entry. I don't want to open it again for fear of crashing my system. So we're going to convert our integer to floating point using uh, this module. Actually, let me open it up and fix that. That is, uh, let's go back in here. So yeah, I did write integer to floating point. So I'm going to be instantiating this, computing the square root. So let's just instantiate this module, integer to floating point. So alter FP convert. What is the name you want for the output file? And uh, so let's just call it integer to floating point dot VHD. Hit next. And it takes a little bit of time on my tablet, on your computers, it shouldn't take that long at all. So there's loading Mega Wizard. So hopefully it doesn't take too long, so I don't want to pause the lecture. Well, it is taking too long. Maybe I should have paused the lecture. So let me pause the lecture and then once this loads, we'll get started again. Okay, continuing. So the Mega Wizard plugin popped up and you can see you need a clock input, a 32-bit input, but then let's restrict that integer to floating point custom. And the minimum you can actually do is four bits. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'll fix the block diagram appropriately. Output is specified as, like I said, I'm gonna do 32-bit floating point Let's hit next. And as you can see, it's really easy to configure this. And I encourage you to read the documentation on the web. That's where this will take us on these mega functions. It's pretty easy to uh, understand. Hit next. Uh, to properly simulate the, the generated design files, the following simulation model files are needed. And uh, this is just a note. And I'll show you how to simulate this in model sim later in this lecture. And then here is all the files that will generate. Everything to fall should be good. Let's hit finish. And as it's generating, let me go in here and fix this. That is, this is going to be four bits because of the restriction placed by the mega wizard. Let's save that. And bottom line is, if you go back to, um, let's see, hopefully this is saved, yep. No, it's not saved, I'll have to work on that later. But as you will see here under Project Navigator, you can see that it has added a QIP, a Quartus intellectual property file, if you will, with the .vhd. This is the uh, file that you wanna open. All right, sometimes in Quartus, it doesn't show this dropdown but that's okay in the sense you can go in your directory and you can see the .vhdl file. It's got an instantiation example, but if you open up this .vhdl file, uh, you can see the entire conversion uh, and it's got, it's pretty, it's a lot of vhdl. And usually your entity statement for the corresponding integer to floating point is not the first entity statement, but you can easily find out what that entity is by just searching for it, entity integer to floating point is port, that's how, oops, there. So the, that's how the entity start and the port is on the next line, that's why it couldn't find it. But anyway, all you need to do is take this, uh, close that and then make it a component. So let's make this a component. And component, and then we'll just instantiate it in the sense, let's, uh, I'm not gonna say this makes any sense, but we're going in this, well, the instantiation is gonna make sense, but the result is gonna be in floating point. So we're just gonna send it out to a, uh, input in floating point to the hex displays, but we have only 28 total bits for the hex displays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a 32-bit signal 
uh, then uh, convert input to floating point is an instance of integer to floating point port map and then the clock simply goes to the clock 50 goes to clock we don't need to worry about that it's abstracted away the details of how it uses the clock data a goes to sw i mean this w3 down to zero gets connected to data a and finally result goes to input in floating point and now what we're going to do is we're just going to map send this to the hex displays so um, let's see hex 3 is going to be input in floating point uh, 6 down to 0 and then okay let's do hex 2 as well input in floating point so it's going to be um, 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 13 down to 7 and we can use the other hex displays, but I'm just going to connect them to zero. Let's do this. Let's make this hex zero, hex one, hex two, hex three. Let's just do a control K of this. And I'm already at 17 minutes. So this is what I'm going to do. Once this analysis and synthesis finishes with their errors, I'm going to pause the lecture, do the model some test bench and the simulation results, and then show you the do file, and then we'll call this, uh, we'll wrap up the lecture. As usual, the reference design for this will be under the lecture notes and videos folder, uh, that is lecture notes and videos EE2900 winter 2013 folder. Okay, And you can see the, uh, the synthesis is proceeding without any problems okay it elaborated the mega function and uh, so the problem is uh, it doesn't looks like hmm, so it looks like it didn't synthesize anything let's just check that because let's look at our TL viewer Because the reason why I say that is in the compilation report. Come on. Okay, it did synthesize. So yeah, I don't know why it was saying in the compilation report there was no logic elements. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna pause the lecture, uh, finish up the model, some simulation. I'm gonna assemble this and download it to the board because there's no point. It's just a demonstration example how to use the mega wizard all right i'm going to pause the lecture set up the model sim you should also do this and then check your answer once you finish up finish setting up model sim check your answer with the lecture video all right i'll be back continuing just took me like 10 minutes to set up the model sim simulation so first of all uh, here's the test bench okay doing the do file so pretty standard the only difference is we need to create a 50 megahertz or 20 nanoseconds clock. So I declare a signal called clock 50 of type standard logic, in initialize it to zero, and every 10 nanoseconds I flip it. Obviously, this is not synthesizable. Then we instantiate the device under test. Whoops. And then I send in some test vectors for my switches. Very standard stuff. And here is my sim.do file. The only interesting thing is the if you look at the instantiation template that the mega wizard puts out. It's just a template for the component instantiation, so you just can't really compile it. You'll get an error, but that we don't need that. So I compiled uh, in line seven. I compiled the mega wizard. I mean the top level uh, dot, and then the sub module integer to floating point. Compile the test bench, start simulation, add some signals to the wave window with labels and dividers, and run the simulation for 200 nanoseconds. And there's just some random internal signal I added, just to show you the. Uh, robustness of functional simulation using model sim and here is the result and if I zoom full you can see I have a 50 megahertz clock I get um, uh, interestingly I still get all zeros so let's run it for some more time let's run it for one microsecond more and see what happens Maybe we'll get something. Hmm. No, interestingly, we're still getting zeros. 
So anyway, this is something we'll explore in lab. Uh, but the bottom line is, here is the functional simulation using model sim, and we really should not uh, intuitively be getting zeros. And we'll explore that later, or you can explore it on your own, and we can discuss it later. All right, uh, see you next lecture.